If you couldn't tell by some of the thumbnails, I'm a fan of Fire Emblem. And today we're going to talk about the most popular Fire Emblem game. The mobile money grab, Fire Emblem Heroes! Fire Emblem Heroes is a turn-based strategy RPG for smartphones. Heroes features characters from every game in the Fire Emblem series except BS, although it wasn't always like that. When the game launched, all the characters were from 5 of the, at the time, 14 games, but it didn't take long for the roster to fill out with characters from other entries. Unless, of course, you're a fan of Thracia 776, which for a long time only had two minor characters representing it, and even today it has fairly lacking representation compared to the other games. But besides that game, it's very likely you'll find a few of your favorite characters among the roster. Some characters that were unusable in their home games are made available in this game, like Grail and Rinka. Even Tokyo Mirage Sessions has a few characters, and I have almost all of them despite never going out of my way to get any of them, save the free one. With currently over 600 characters, Heroes has the largest cast of any Fire Emblem game, dwarfing mainline games with large casts like Radiant Dawn and New Mystery. But there is one big advantage that Radiant Dawn and New Mystery have over Heroes. All of the characters are theoretically usable once you pay the entry fee that is buying the game, Heroes, on the other hand, is a free-to-play gotcha game! Hooray! Everyone's favorite type of video game! The one, and I do mean one, good thing about the gotcha is that you have a bit more control over it than other gotchas I've played. Each hero is grouped to buy a color. Red, blue, green, or colorless. The game will generate five heroes each time you start summoning, but you don't have to open all of them. This means if you only want, say, a lance unit, you can exclusively pull blue orbs to lessen the fear of getting pity broken by someone else. Of course, you'll be battling the desire sensor to actually get those blue orbs to spawn. And it's also possible that you'll never get the unit you want. But there are a few mechanics in place to stop that from happening. Still, it is possible for units to completely evade you. I'm a day one player, and I still don't have base Lucina, who is a launch focus unit. A lot of characters in Heroes are alternate versions of other characters. Sometimes these come in the form of legendary heroes, which are basically the promoted forms of lords and important story figures. There tends to be quite a bit of thought put into these legendary heroes, with a bunch of references to their home games. For example, Legendary Ike is considered an Earth hero because he has the Earth affinity in his games. Legendary Alm is an Earth hero because of his speech near the end of Echoes about how peasants and the king alike will till the fields in the new kingdom. And Legendary Claude is an Earth hero, because the Urk icon is yellow, and that's Claude's color. Most of the time, though, characters will get different versions of themselves based off whatever silly event is going on. There are your standard holiday events, like bunny and egg themed attire for Easter, characters reunited with beloved family members for Valentine's Day, and overpowered armor units that make you want to break open your bank for Christmas. But there are also some strange events. Once some Echoes and Face characters went on a picnic, and there was a whole event dedicated to that, there's a batch of characters that get redesigned to be dancers every fall, and I'm not sure why. And there was a pirate festival once, celebrating the thugs you kill off in the early game with each entry. Although actually that one was kind of cool since it featured characters that are or were pirates. The ninja festival, on the other hand, didn't feature any of the ninjas that actually exist in the series. Not even any thieves. And how could I forget about the brave characters? Once a year, a popularity contest called Choose Your Legend is held. This is a poll to see who the two most popular men and women in the series are, and then those characters are given overpowered alternate forms. These alts tend to be some of the cooler ones in the game though, like Alm and Celica being based off the original Guidance box art, or Ike being dressed up as Grail and even using his axe. This year the gatekeeper from Three Houses won in the land side, gaining more votes than anyone in any CYL except for Edelgard. And unlike Edelgard, Gatekeeper doesn't have an equally large hate brigade, this means that the Gatekeeper is most likely THE most popular Fire Emblem character. So that's nice. It's good for him. Once your characters are ready to go, how do you use them? Typically, you'll get 4 deployment slots each map, although unlike the mainline games, you'll build your team in a specific team building menu before engaging the map. Combat has been simplified on paper. Instead of strength and magic, there's just attack, and there's no accuracy checks or critical hits. Instead, there are specials that are guaranteed to go off every few rounds of combat. The complicated part here is the skills. Heroes is the most skill-based game in the entire series. Not that you have to be good to play it, but rather the skills you equip are everything in battle. A character has 7 skill slots, one for their weapon, one for an assist, like a rally or heal, 
one for their special, three additional skills, and a sacred seal slot, which is just a fancy name for a fourth skill slot. Skills can be as simple as adding 5 HP, when complex enough to take up half the screen with their explanation. While each character comes with a few skills, they'll rarely come with enough to completely fill out their loadout. To do that, you'll need to inherit skills from other units. There's a lot more to talk about with this, but I don't have the time or will to do so. Back onto the topic of maps, they are almost always 6x8, with a few modes offering a slightly larger size to work with. But despite this limitation, there's a surprising amount of maps made, with some even being recreations of parts of maps from the main games. When you're playing a map, it's mostly just standard fire emblem. You move then the enemy moves, a combat is just attack minus defense or res, if a unit dies they're dead forever, I hope you enjoyed the real world money you spent for them. That last point was only a humorous jest, but generally there are penalties for letting one of your units die. The vast majority of maps in this game are route maps, and there are a few survive maps thrown in for spice. The gameplay really is just the basics of Fire Emblem, to the point where Kanto was only fairly recently introduced, like 5 years into the lifespan. But that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you don't want to deal with how your biorhythm reduces the accuracy of your capture, which if failed will leave your child unit without a gale force. There is a plot in Fire Emblem Heroes. It's not good. It started as just a monster of the week style with Fire Emblem Worlds, and now there's fairies and jelly skellies and mecha horses and are we sure we're still playing Fire Emblem? There are a variety of modes to choose from once you're done building up your units and finishing the plot like playing the plot maps in order with your health carrying over between each map. We're playing the plot maps, but with beefed up enemies. We're playing the plot maps, but with extremely beefed up enemies, and you can only use each unit once per map. There are other, other modes in the game too. There are really too many to list, but the basic gameplay between them is generally the same, usually with a certain twist like units getting stat boost. The two big game modes that have their own sections on the menu are the Colosseum and Aether Raids. Arena, the original Colosseum mode, is a 4 on 4 battle. You earn points based off the units you bring in and the skills they have, and you lose points for having casualties. The catches that the opponent needs to face are teams made by other players. The goal is to chain 5 wins together and hope you rank up next week. The arena is very important, as it's the most reliable way to gain orbs in the game, which is the currency used to summon more heroes. There are a few other modes in the Colosseum. Arena Assault has you try to chain 7 wins together using a different team for each battle. And there's also allegiance battles, where you try to beat characters using the weapon triangle. Wow. The rewards are really good, but it's only available every other week. Finally, there's resonant battles. You use allies from two games and try to kill thieves before they escape. It's really boring and the rewards are only okay. Aether Raid seems to be the most popular game mode. Remember how in Arena you fought 4 and 4? Now imagine that, but the opponent denies the map you fight on. You can bring some facilities of your own to help even the odds, but each bout is in a new location thanks to how many people are playing the game. As you get better at the game, you can upgrade your facilities and bring more units to battle with you. I'm surprised this mode is so popular though, as most of the rewards come in the form of currency you can only use in Aether Raids. You do get some heroic grails, which can be used to buy certain characters, but those characters usually aren't that good, and you get a pitiful amount of grails each time. The mode also features an auto battle mode, for when you come to the realization that Aether Race is pointless, but you still want the rewards. There's also a bunch of limited time events, which don't deserve more than a single sentence for the description. First, there's Tempest Trials, which are chain challenges, but more random. There's Hall of Forms, where you use rented units to clear maps or spend real-world money to buy one of your units. There's the Voting Gauntlet, where you play five times for the orb rewards and then forget about it. There's Grand Conquest, where you work with a team of other players to claim areas on a map from other players. There's Tap Battle, which is a rhythm game. There's Forging Bonds, where you unlock interactions between characters and get hats and stuff. There's Mjolnir Strike, which is Aether Raids but on a big map and with defend points. There's Pawns of Loki, which is a more simplified version of the game where only combat matters. There are Roku Sieges where you achieve the super boss with the abilities of Glimmer, Soul, and Special Denial. And there's Frontline Phalanx, which I have no idea how it works. Pretty much everyone I see online hates these limited time events, because most of them have basically no effort put into them, and the rewards usually aren't that good either. I think Heroes is a good game, but it's marred by a myriad of problems. Most of these stem from its nature as a gacha. At the end of the day, getting characters is just a matter of luck. 
and there have been times I've been blessed and cursed by the RNG. This is just going for one copy of a character, too. I haven't even attempted to build up any 5-star exclusives out of the fear of the amount of resources that would take. Speaking of resources, there's some real bloat there. There are so many different items that can be collected in this game, and most of them have no value. If you're a new player, I guess it's worth collecting them. By your first month, you'll probably have half of these things at such a high amount you will have no idea what to do with them. Heroes also has a problem with strengthening his characters. In pretty much every other gacha I played, when you get a new character, the process is to spend some experience items and items you get in abundance to bring them to their maximum potential. Thanks to the SP system in Heroes, that's not the case at all. You get less SP if you use the EXP items on your characters. So what you have to do is you have to do these dumb training maps that take up a ton of stamina at their maximum level to grind out SP. And remember, if you inherited skills, there's a bonus cost you have to pay. So it can get really ridiculous to build up some characters, especially old characters that have really bad skills. But the skill system is nothing compared to the emerging system. From what I've seen, it's not unheard of for gacha to require you getting multiple copies of a character to fully max out said character. What is unheard of is the amount of copies heroes requires you to get, being 11. It takes about 1,700 orbs to get all the copies of a 5-star focus hero you'll need to max one out, and that's assuming the banner has 4 heroes on it. The race is slightly better with a 3-man banner, but on legendary and mythic banners, which hold some of the best units in the game, the race go absolutely down the gutter. Luckily, there are a number of 3- and 4-star heroes that are still very good, and due to their lower rarity, they're much easier to obtain. There is another catch, though. You'll have to promote the hero to 5-stars before you can merge them. The jump from 3 to 4 stars is a measly 2,000 feathers, which even beginners of the game won't have trouble getting. But the jump to 4 to 5 stars is a whopping 20,000, or rather, 200,000, thinking that you'll have to merge 10 times to max a character out. Thankfully, the way most modes work, you'll be fighting characters at a similar strength to yours, but if you want the big goodies, you'll have to go up against nightmare opponents, which means merging out your characters. I'm going to take this minute to talk about the power creep problem. If your favorite character was introduced at launch and isn't Eliwood or Ryoma, odds are they aged like the finest milk in all the land. And even those two are pretty lousy out of the box these days. Nowadays, characters come with hyper-competitive stat lines and the skills they need. There are ways to bring older characters up to relevancy, but in general, new characters are just so much better that it's not even worth it. No character demonstrates a problem with power creep better than Fallen Edelgard possibly the strongest unit in a Fire Emblem game period. The Hegemon Husk has high stats in every category but speed. But don't worry, she can't be doubled. She also can't be engaged on the player phase, or else she'll retaliate with a charged special that scales off her sky-high defense. And she also can't be engaged on the enemy phase safely unless you one-shot her, because if she initiates combat, she gets a second action. She also has the movement of an infantry unit instead of an armored unit. And she heals after combat. And the first hit she takes on either phase is reduced by 40%. Have fun taking this monster down in literally every game mode that involves other people, because everyone has one, and everyone loves to use her. But besides those problems, I think Heroes is a good game. Its number one competition, though, is ironically itself. We all know that emulators exist for mobile devices now, so it's really hard to justify doing this free-to-play trap when you can just download a Fire Emblem game onto your emulator. But if you don't want to go through the hassle, it's a good way to get your fix, I guess. Remember that you are legally required to like this video and subscribe to the channel. If not, I will hunt you down and pester you until you like this video and subscribe to the channel. That's it. Well, goodbye.